Hi, today I'd like to talk about Alphonse Lapaglia. This week we got in a nice group of Lapaglia silver. I've always liked his silver and it made me want to learn more about him. Anyway, he was born in Sicily in 1907 and then in the 1930s he went to work at the George Jensen Company in Denmark. With the beginning of World War II, silver production was no longer possible in Denmark and they created George Jensen USA and it was headquartered in New York and Alphonse Lapaglia was chosen to head this company that was making the silver for George Jensen. They made mainly hollowware and they, they were not quite like the George Jensen patterns, but they had the, the same modern, handmade look and feel as George Jensen silver. Here's a few pieces of George Jensen blossom, probably their, their most exciting pattern they ever made, completely handmade with a lotus blossom. Here's a punch ladle, and then here's another piece that's not George Jensen, it was made by another Danish maker named Mikkelsen and again it's a blossom and then in this case it's all pierced with flowers. And so many companies in Denmark made this modern looking silver and Lapaglia carried it over to George Jensen USA. So here is a large bowl that came in the collection. It has small lotus blossoms around the bottom, quite heavy and quite modern. A very popular motif. They made everything with that motif. They made tea sets, they made bowls, they made goblets, they made, you know, virtually anything you can think of in that motif. Here's a small bowl in that motif. Here's a pair of short candlesticks, which are kind of rare in that motif. One of my favorite things that they did at George Jensen USA were these council sticks. So a nice blossom, very much reminiscent of the blossom by Jensen. There is talk that La Paglia actually had a hand in developing the blossom pattern at George Jensen. Okay. They also made uh, flatware, and here's some examples. There's a letter opener, here's a salad set, a butter pick, a couple of ladles with different motifs, a cheese server, and a sugar spoon. So after the war in 1952, George Jensen USA was no longer necessary production was moved back to Denmark and there was a rift between La Paglia and George Jensen. He decided to go to International Silver Company and to start a small workshop there and continue his La Paglia line. And so some pieces that we get will say George Jensen USA, some pieces will be marked La Paglia, some pieces will be marked La Paglia International Silver Company. La Paglia had his small workshop at the back of his house. It was actually in his garage. He had six workers who were making the handmade silver. One day he noticed that gutter in the garage was filled with silt. He climbed up on the top of the garage, fell down, broke his leg, had a stroke from a blood clot that he had there and died in 1953. The project hardly got started with the death of La Paglia. International Silver continued with the La Paglia line, but by 1957 it was closed down. So it was a very short window, basically from the 1940 to 1950-ish for the um, Jensen USA, and then from 1952 to 1957 made by International Silver. And it's just a shame that he died so quickly because his work was great. And if you want to collect something that really has great quality to it, 
and a modern look to it. You know, I would really would suggest La Paglia. For example, this ladle of blossom by George Jensen is quite rare. It sells for $2,700. A similar ladle uh, with La Paglia will sell for seven to nine hundred dollars and it's quite a bit bigger and I think there's more handwork with it and as I say with the flatware from La Paglia you know his focus really was the hollowware so it's not that easy to find the flatware it's really well done and relatively inexpensive you know a, a small ladle like this will be oh eighty to a hundred and forty dollars or so depending on who has it and you know I think it'd be a, a fun thing to collect and it's really timely with the lower prices for La Paglia's things.